So we're back today to kind of talk to you guys about the characteristics of minerals. So the one thing about minerals is that there's a number of identifying properties that we demonstrate in class to help you identify them. Minerals are going to come in a variety of shapes and sizes, all different looks. Page 16 in your reference table is going to be imperative in terms of trying to figure out what these minerals are based on their characteristics. So what we're going to do is we're going to run through just the basic properties that you're going to see in class that will help you with the identification process. So the first one that's probably the most visible and probably the one that's the first thing that you're going to identify is color. The problem with color is that color changes from sample to sample. So over here on the left side, we have two samples of hematite. One is kind of a sparkly gray. One, one is kind of a dull red earthy color. Exact same mineral, just formed in different environments. The samples on the right are a sample called calcite. Again, very similar shape to them, but very, very different colors. One is clear, one is white. Again, same mineral, just very, very different properties in terms of what they look like, how we observe them. They just formed in different environments. So color is not a good identifying property. There are two minerals, though, that we identify by color. One of them is called sulfur. Sulfur is easy because it's yellow, it smells like rotten eggs, it looks like scrambled eggs. That's an easy one to identify. And the other one that's easy to identify is olivine. Olivine always has kind of this olive green look to it. So color, not a good identifying property. The second characteristic is a characteristic called streak. And this is going to be the powdered version of the mineral. What we do here is we take a mineral and we basically get the powdered version by rubbing it along the tile. Now, you'll notice here I have two streak plates. What I like to do is I like to give my students the ability to get the contrast of a light mineral on a dark streak plate, but I also like to give them the opportunity for a dark mineral like galena on a light streak plate, like so. So you clearly can see you want to get the contrast between the mineral and the streak plate. Now, some minerals do not give a streak at all, or a very, very faint streak like quartz, okay, will give you kind of almost no streak at all. Again, the harder minerals, very hard to get a streak because this is the mineral breaking off on the streak plate and giving you kind of that chalk line, okay, on there. So really all you need to do is identify, is it a colored streak or is it a white streak? And sometimes it doesn't give you any streak at all. The next property is a property called luster. And what luster is, luster is the reflection of light. And there are two different lusters that we talk about in class. One is called metallic. Metallic lusters, your samples look like metal. So these are metallic lusters. They look like chunks of metal. The other luster that we have is non-metallic. Non-metallic does not look like metal. Now you got to be careful because you can have a shiny luster and it could be non-metallic. So for instance, a mineral like quartz that's in my right hand, that is a relatively shiny surface, but it does not look like metal. Doesn't look like metal, non-metallic. Does look like metal, metallic. Next property that we have is going to be hardness. And the way that we do hardness is that we do hardness with a glass tile. What we want to do is we want to see if the mineral is going to physically scratch a piece of glass. And this is definitely done better on a darker surface. It's just a little bit easier to spot. So obviously you see my piece of glass. They're, they're a little bit beat up here. But not only will you be able to spot, I'll try to find a spot on the glass. You can see the scratch, but you're also going to be able to hear the scratch. So if I take a piece of quartz, Quartz has a hardness of about 7. Glass has a hardness of about 5.5. A 7 will scratch a 5.5. So if you listen, you can hear and see the scratch. You can hear the mineral scratching the glass. Okay, But you can also see the scratch and feel the scratch. In this case, the quartz is harder than the glass. If I take a mineral like sulfur, sulfur is incredibly soft. Sulfur may break off on the glass, but it will not scratch it. 
sulfur is softer than 5.5. So hardness is going to all be about scratching of glass. The last property that we have is going to be cleavage or fracture. Cleavage or fracture is how a mineral is going to break. Now, a mineral sample like calcite has cleavage. And the easy way to, to recognize it, it's going to have a very geometric shape to it. It's also going to have a lot of flat sides, specifically parallel flat sides that I can put my fingers on. So a mineral like calcite is going to exhibit cleavage. A mineral like galena is going to show almost a cubic shape to it. That is going to exhibit cleavage. Even a mineral like this, like the micas, the biotite or the muscovite, from up above it doesn't look too even, but if you turn the mineral on its side, that's a perfectly flat plane. That's what we consider cleavage. Cleavage is going to be a situation where the internal arrangement of atoms have bonded themselves together where the mineral breaks along flat sides. Now, to kind of demo this, what I would like to do is I would like to take a piece of calcite and I want to show you exactly how this is going to break. So I'm just going to take a piece of paper towel and I'm going to put it over top of the mineral sample so it doesn't explode all over the place. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hammer and I'm going to hit it. And I'm going to show you that the little pieces are going to look identical to the original sample. So if I just take hammer here, if I hit this real quick, give it a couple hits, you'll see that the smaller pieces that have broken apart look identical to the original sample. Okay, look at these pieces. They look identical to the original sample. So there is another original sample of calcite. Look at the smaller pieces that broke apart. So these pieces, even the little shards right down here at the bottom here, they all look like the original sample because the way the atoms have bonded themselves together with the calcite allows it to break along these flat surfaces. That is cleavage. So let me move that off to the side. Fracture. Fracture just means a mineral is going to break along uneven surfaces. There are no flat sides to it. So again, if I take this mineral sample, let me just hit this with the hammer. Sulfur is much, much, much softer. Give it a couple hits. Look how the sulfur just kind of disintegrated. Okay, it just kind of broke into a ton of little tiny pieces. There's no order whatsoever. So cleavage and fracture okay, are completely different ways in which a mineral is going to break. Flat sides for cleavage, uneven sides for fracture. Now, one thing about calcite as well, some of these minerals have very unique properties. So for instance, calcite is kind of a, a, an example of a mineral that's very, very easy to identify because if we put hydrochloric acid on the calcite, it reacts, it bubbles with hydrochloric acid. So it will actually react. So it's very easy to be able to figure out the difference between calcite that bubbles with hydrochloric acid and say a mineral like halite. Halite is just rock salt, but that's much more of a cube compared to kind of the uh, geometric trapezoid shape of calcite. And you can see that calcite will bubble with hydrochloric acid. Another neat property of calcite is that it has a property called double refraction. And what that means is, let me see if I can demonstrate this for you. So let me just get the reference table up. So let me get the reference table up here, and I'll get the word calcite. If you put calcite over top of the word calcite, you'll see it kind of doubles up. That's a property called double refraction. It's kind of a neat one there. It's double refraction. And then another property that some minerals have, this is a mineral called magnetite. It is naturally magnetic. So the, magnet, the magnetic properties of this mineral allow the paper clips to be able to stuck directly to it. So those are the basic characteristics of our minerals. 
in terms of what you need to know for class. So I wish you the best of luck in your studies and we will talk to you real soon.